Ladies and gentlemen, as we move from crisis to gradual recovery from the coronavirus pandemic, we have a unique but narrow window of opportunity to transform our economy and to bring forward the changes that have been long delayed and which our society needs in order to create a genuinely sustainable future that is within planetary boundaries. To achieve this, uh, we must put nature at the centre of the circle. And to make this possible, we must act for health and well-being. We must recognise the true value of biodiversity and the fundamental interdependence of all living things. And we must invest in nature as the true engine for a new economy, a circular bioeconomy that gives back to nature as much as we take from her in order to restore urgently the balance we have so rashly disrupted. The advances of science and technology at the intersection of the biological, physical and digital worlds provides the circular bioeconomy with the innovation potential to replace the current fossil-based economy. The pandemic we are experiencing is a symptom of the wider challenges of climate change and biodiversity loss. The crisis caused by our fossil-based economy has peaked dramatically in the past 50 years of intense industrialization. Science also shows that biodiversity loss and deforestation are important factors explaining the emergence and transmission of zoonotic diseases such as COVID-19. So this current crisis is just another wake-up call demonstrating in dramatic fashion the fact that we are crossing the resilience boundaries of our planet. What we need now, ladies and gentlemen, is a new way of thinking as a basis of a, for a new economic paradigm, one that is circular, not linear, uh, one where prosperity and human well-being takes place within the ecological boundaries of our planet. In other words, a paradigm based on a renewable, regenerative and inclusive economy, powered by nature, and that prospers in harmony with nature. A circular bioeconomy, relying on healthy, biodiverse and resilient ecosystems, offers a conceptual framework for using renewable natural capital to provide a more durable form of well-being through uh, the provision of ecosystem services and the sustainable management of biological resources, such as plants, animals, microorganisms, and derived biomass, including organic waste. At the same time, the circular transformation of biological resources into food, feed, uh, energy and biomaterials within the ecological boundaries of the ecosystems is absolutely key to move away from an unsustainable fossil-based economy. All of this uh, has the potential to create entirely new sustainable industries and livelihoods. Now, having been engaged in these issues for, I suppose, nigh on 50 years, uh, when I made my first speech on the environment and issues of waste, and uh, having talked to countless experts across the globe, I've come to realize that it is not a lack of capital that is holding us back, but rather uh, the way in which we deploy it. And I must say, in all these years of trying to raise awareness of the crucial need to take action before it is too late, it is only now, in the last year or so, that the level of interest in sustainable investments and innovation has suddenly never been higher. Therefore, to seize the rapidly closing window of opportunity we have before us, we must act 
and act now to catalyze the paradigm shift we so desperately need, it is utterly crucial that we connect investments to investable circular bioeconomy solutions. And, and this is why I am so delighted that the Circular Bioeconomy Alliance, as part of my Sustainable Markets Initiative, is working to connect the dots between investors, companies, uh, governmental and non-governmental organizations to advance the circular bioeconomy globally. The Alliance serves as a central hub for supporting an informed transition to a circular bioeconomy that is climate neutral, inclusive, and prospers in harmony with nature. If we are to achieve results, we must take the necessary action with speed and determination, quickly and through a multi-stakeholder approach. The time for talking and testing our world to destruction is long past, so I very much hope you will join us in this vital effort as we work collectively to put nature at the heart of global decision making. And I need hardly say I much look forward to genuinely effective outcomes from this critical conference.